So for a minute there, me and the library were beefing. Also, part of me thinks I'm Emily Henry. Hey guys, good morning. I'm Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and today's video is going to be a reading vlog. I am reading two very completely different books right now so I figured it'd be kind of fun to vlog my reactions to both of them. I'm currently reading, <laughs> I'm scared to say this, Credence by Penelope Douglas. I've heard about this book before but I've never actually physically put it on my want to read list on Goodreads because I've heard disturbing things about it but then after a month of like not really romance books or nothing like spicy I said forget it let's do it let's read Credence by Penelope Douglas and let me tell you <laughs> this is not for the faint of heart it is very spicy it's borderline disturbing like I don't know if there are trigger warnings for it or like just warnings in general but maybe look up the description and reviews from other people because yeah definitely different than anything I've read. Spicy scenes are spicy <laughs> so if you're looking for that perfect. I think I'm 60% through it. I'm like how is this going to end? How is this going to end? Because I genuinely don't know. I don't yeah. So there's that. Switch an angle so you guys can see my bookshelf. The next book I want to read for this video is <laughs> Happy Place by Emily Henry. And you guys right now might be shocked because I am constantly talking about how I'm not reading this or purchasing the book at least until it comes out in paperback because I think it's ridiculous that this book is a trillion times bigger than Beach Read, People We Meet on Vacation, Book Lovers, and it looks silly sitting next to the smaller books on the bookshelf. Like, Look at that. That looks silly. Okay, it doesn't look that silly, but I like all of my books to be the same size, especially if they're by the same author. Especially if the other three of her big popular books are the same size, then I want this one to be the same size. And I'm sure Emily Henry has actually nothing to do with this. It's probably her publishing company and for some reason a lot of people release hard covers first. I don't know why a paperback hasn't been released since because this has been out since, I don't know how long this has been out, but this has been out definitely since spring. So yeah, I'm not buying this until it's paperback. I just, I already have a lot of hard covers from book of the month and I want all of my Emily Henry books to be uniform, okay? That's just a crazy thing, I get it. So in my head I was like, man, I'm gonna have to wait forever for this to come out. And then I was like, girl, Go on the Libby app and place that book on hold so you can read it on kin on your Kindle. And by the time I realized I should do that, I was number 500 in line. <laughs> but this past week, I think I ha I've been on it for maybe two months now, just waiting and slowly moving up. And I think I got to like 250 or something like that. I don't know. I have a screenshot of it though. And I got a notification from the Libby app, which if you don't know, the Libby app is connected to the library, your public library that you have a library card at so I actually have two library cards because we moved recently and Happy Place my library I live closest to now they acquired 11 more copies of Happy Place and when your library does that there's this feature on the Libby app where it gives you a notification and when you click into the Libby app it says hurry skip the line and if you click that within a few hours no matter what place you are in line you can get that book delivered to your Kindle and when I saw that, I dropped everything. I took screenshots of it because I was so excited. I was like, yay, I can finally do a reading vlog for Happy Place. I clicked on it and then I went about my day. I go to download it to my Kindle later and it's not in the Libby app. And I go back to my screenshots and it says like borrowing this book. And I can't really reach out to the library or anything because as much as I want to cause problems, I'm not going to <laughs> over a book. So for a minute there, me and the library were beefing. I told Sam about it, I told Katie about it, and I was just like, I could have sworn I clicked borrowing. And I have the screenshots to prove it because I was so excited. Fast forward to yesterday, about a week later, I get an email from my local library, and I normally only get emails for physical books. And I wasn't aware that you could place books on hold on Libby for physical copies, I thought you had to actually do that on your library's website. I thought Libby was just for Kindle and audiobook. And I swear it is. I think there was just a glitch because I got an email that my copy of Happy Place was available for pickup and I screamed. I was like, Sam, we're going, we're going right now, we're going right now. I go to pick up my copy 
and it's there and it's beautiful honestly the cover up maybe they just laminated it poorly but it doesn't look brand new however the pages definitely do and it's weird because even though it was from my local library it has a different library stamped on the back of it i don't know i don't know how skip the line works and i feel bad to the other people that i skipped but you gotta be quick sister you gotta be quick if you want to skip the line and i've done that for like three books recently i did that for the ballad of songbird and snakes i think five survive even i don't know things just worked out so i'm gonna start reading this in this video and let you guys know how it is i just read book lovers by emily henry in october and loved it loved it loved it loved it it was up there with beach read it was five stars so i'm excited to take on happy place and let you guys know my thoughts Sorry for rambling for so damn long. My other bookish update right now is that I finally got my merch from I'll Read What She's Reading podcast. Guys, if you're a reader, you love listening to audiobooks, podcasts, whatever, just always consuming content, you need to start listening to reading podcasts, especially I'll Read What She's Reading. I love this shirt. Even the tag is cute. Look at it. Romanticized reading. I love this color. It's, it's like a light, light green. And on the back, it's just adorable. I love the little touches that make it special. It's merch, but it also totally looks like just a graphic t-shirt, something you could buy in any trendy store. The quality of it is so nice. It's so thick. I hate that I'm showing you guys this now because by the time you're watching this, they're not selling it anymore. They actually haven't been for months, but my order finally came in. They did say it was pre-order and it was going to take a while, but I am so happy with it. It's gonna look so good with some baggy jeans, a little front tuck, maybe a little headband. I'm obsessed with it, for real. Speaking of that, some other good reading podcasts are Bookmarked by Destiny Sidwell and Sarah Caroli. There's that. And then uh, the most recent one I found is The Redheads. And this was started by Jackie from The Morning Toast. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Here. And they just pick one book a month where these four friends or sisters read together and then they talk about it. I find myself if I can't figure out what book to read next I'll go to their old episodes and see some books they've talked about and I'll pick one of those books they talked about to read next because I love hearing people talk about books I love or hate it. It's just so funny to see everybody's opinions. So check those book podcasts out if you are interested in more book content. I don't know if I should have told y'all that I was reading Credence by Penelope Douglas because um it was spicy, but now it just got even spicier. But I mean, if you guys know what I'm talking about, then I feel like you've read it too and I don't feel so bad. My curiosity got the best of me and so I'm reading it. And now I'm 70% through and I feel like I have to finish it because then it counts as a book for my Goodreads challenge. But I don't really want to tell anybody I read this, but maybe they won't know what it is. <laughs> you know what? I don't even care. I read a lot of wholesome books last month. So this is my fun wild card filthy book. I think I'm gonna start Happy Place soon. I need, um, I need something a little different. <laughs> freaking out because I am obsessed with this book. Also, part of me thinks I'm Emily Henry because I've never had an original thought or experience in my life. And everything she says in these books, I can relate to. The way she describes the love and her feelings for someone, well, the characters obviously, but I mean, she, Emily Henry is writing it. I'm like, oh my gosh, she put a feeling into words, which I mean, obviously you can put any feeling into words, but the way she describes it is so spot on i'm obsessed started this book today i was supposed to edit a video and get one up this weekend don't know if that's gonna happen because i physically can't stop reading this book i'm on page 155 started this this afternoon i need to finish this i need to finish this so we'll see basically if you guys don't know what this is about it's about win and harriet who were together for years after college and then they like recently broke up five months ago and they meet up for their yearly friend group trip in Maine and they had to pretend that they're together because it would tear their friend group apart if their friend group knew they broke up since they've all been friends for years. And so they're like fake dating 
are fake engaged because they were engaged before they broke up and it's hinted at why they broke up slightly but i feel like it when that flashback happens because it keeps flashing back to when they first started dating and then to like real life when it flashes back to their breakup it's gonna destroy me okay i'm gonna go back to reading bye hey guys i have reading updates to come don't worry but i just wanted to show you the nespresso pods i ordered this month of course i got the ice leggero because those are my favorite but they had blue bottle coffee pods on there and i've only been to blue bottle i think twice in san francisco honestly i don't even think the coffee's that good it's just the vibes and it's fun because it's really popular and i love that logo so simple but here they are and they're bright blue just like their logo i just made some coffee i don't think they're meant to be for iced coffee but i'm gonna put some ice in it a little bit of milk and call it a day also, I want to show you, we are fostering a dog, a golden retriever, and he is a perfect baby angel. So if you see him in the videos this week, that is why we're just, we're not actually his foster, we're babysitting him for another foster, and then we'll probably get our own foster dog in the upcoming weeks. We had a golden retriever for just under three years. If you've been watching my videos for a while, or if you've just saw a few old ones toby was probably in those videos he actually got t-cell lymphoma lymphoma and they found it when it was stage four and sadly he only lived two months after his diagnosis they said potentially six to nine months and then it just went downhill fast we did chemo with him and after i think six weeks the vet was like he's not responding to it anymore so it was really sad and honestly i'm just now seven eight months later accepting the fact it's still hard every single day but it's time to have a little bundle of joy in our lives again we can only foster right now because potentially we're moving and we just figured with this big old yard we have we have such a nice yard in our new house we figured we might as well help now that i'm feel like I can handle it <laughs> and the organization that we are fostering through and you can adopt through this organization as well they keep posting that they need help so I was like okay I can do it I won't be emotional I won't get attached let's foster but yeah here he is you want to say hi Jack you want to say hi Jack hi angel you love the camera you know how to show the camera huh you love the camera hi buddy hi angel this is Jack. They um, don't know exactly how old he is. He was actually rescued from China. This organization, they raise a ton of money and then save dogs in China and Turkey, I believe. Mostly Goldens, but they'll save any dog they can find. They think he's probably around eight months to a year, and I would say that's pretty accurate. He's very puppy-like, has high energy, but he's perfect. Get out of there. Get out of there. Come here. Come here. Go show them all the toys you have out. Let's go show them all the toys you have out. Come on. What are all these toys doing? What are all these toys doing? Get a toy. Come on. Look at all these toys. <laughs> He's happy here, as you can see. Huh? He's happy and well taken care of, huh? You got a toy. You got a toy. He loves the squeaky ones. But yeah, I'll come back to you guys in a few minutes with some reading updates. Guys, Happy Place has been destroying me. Oh my gosh. I already just kind of want to give in and buy it on my Kindle so that way I can highlight all of the quotes and scenes I love because obviously this is a library copy. I've been taking pictures of my favorite quotes and the pages I like so I can remember them when I have my own copy. I'm on page 326. I went home this weekend to see my family in Ohio and I didn't have much time to read but in the moments that I had downtime, I was reading like even if it was three minutes or I had time to read one chapter, I was doing it because I'm that obsessed. I don't want to jump the gun and say that this is going to be my Emily, my favorite Emily Henry book, but I think it is going to be. And I've tried to avoid spoilers and stuff like that, and I think I've done a good job of doing that. I've also avoided people just talking about the book in general, but when I did see people talking about the book, I think they were mostly mad about the miscommunication here in this book because a whole relationship could have been saved if they had communicated, but I don't think it's a silly miscommunication at all. This may be kind of 
spoilery but not really if you want to skip ahead 30 seconds there's obviously a huge miscommunication Wynn is dealing with grief and he doesn't know how to ask for help and Harriet grew up not wanting to burden people and so she doesn't want to be a burden to Wynn while he's grieving so even though she's grieving the loss of his father as well because Hank meant a lot to her as well so they're both struggling in their own ways and just trying to be fine for the other person instead of actually communicating and telling each other how they feel so i don't think that's a silly miscommunication at all it was it's obviously much deeper than the surface level reason they kind of gave each other for why they broke up on the car ride home because we actually drove to and from Ohio this weekend. A casual little seven, eight hour drive. I started last night, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. It's a dark academia. I like it so far. I'm really only 10% into it, but I thought right away it was gonna be boring, but it kind of flashes forward in the future for like the first chapter to show you like this is what the end result is gonna be. And then it flashes back to present day and it already, I feel like there's a lot going on. I, I've had to reread a few sentences and make sure I know what's going on and how I understand like how these secret societies work at Yale, but it's very interesting. It's definitely gonna get more disturbing, I feel like. So just a trigger warning, check the trigger warnings for this book. Other than that, I have been reading Credence here and there. I think I read two chapters last night on the car ride and I was like, okay, I can't be reading this right now. So that's when I started Ninth House. I'm gonna see if I can get any reading done today. I do have to work and I wanna make sure that Jack feels comfortable. So I'll update you guys if anything crazy happens. It's the next morning. I'm on the last chapter of Happy Place. Okay, this is unrelated to me crying about the ending. Well, I mean, Harriet knows what she doesn't want. That's, she was like, I know what I don't want. I don't wanna be tired all the time. I don't wanna blah, 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 I won't spoil it. And that is so true. Like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life right now, but I know for a fact I don't wanna do what I used to do. And I can name about 20 other jobs that I don't wanna do. I don't exactly know what I wanna do for the rest of my life, but I think it's important to know what you don't wanna do either. I'm crying. If you know, you know. It's only right for me to read the last page here and cry about it because this is where I cried about book lovers a few weeks ago. Oh my god, I love this shirt. So last time I filmed I had tears in my eyes because I was finishing Happy Place by Emily Henry and guys, five stars. <sighs> I think I like this more than Beach Read because I feel like I can relate to it more in my own way. I don't know. I don't know. I just really love this book and I'm going to be thinking about it for a while. And all of Emily Henry's books, they're not just romance. There's also found family like in this book and in Book Lovers. The main character is working on her relationship with her sister and they're like always growing together and I love that. I forgot to mention that when I talked about book lovers, but it's not just about the romance. It's about family struggles. It's about friendships. It's about so much more than just the romance. That's why Emily Henry's books are actually considered women's fiction, not romance. And I kept seeing, I think Heather McLary posts about it. And women's fiction is I looked it up. It's an umbrella term for women centered books that focus on women's life experience that are marketed to female readers. And that makes complete sense because it's also talking about Harriet's background and like why she's working the job she's working now and why she feels like she has to and stuff like that. Definitely so relatable throwing all of that extra trauma in there, dare I say. Her relationship with her friends from college were just like, oh, the first chapter when it literally says, sorry, this is what I was crying about on page three. My best friends taught me a new kind of quiet. The peaceful stillness of knowing one another so well you don't need to fill the space and a new kind of loud. Noise as celebration as the overflow of joy at being alive. Here. Now. I couldn't have imagined being any happier loving anywhere else as much as I could. Not until Sabrina brought us here to her family's summer house on the coast of Maine. Not until I met when. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't even- I'm not even talking about the last sentence even though I love that part but I'm trying to focus on the one before it where her friends from college are like everything to her and I just college is where I met my best friends freshman year was the most fun I have ever had I had good friends in high school friends that still ended up being in my wedding but like just going to college and being with someone 24 7 and 
sleepovers, staying up late, going out, like, I don't know, waking up on Sunday morning after a crazy night. There's nothing that compares to your first friends in college. And although I may not be like friends with everybody that I started freshman year with, I'll always look back on those times and have such fond memories. Seriously, like even my Snapchat memories, my pictures, I will always keep those memories because it was such a fun time when we're all in the same place and now we're all spread out. So I was reading Credence by Penelope Douglas on my Kindle. I got about 80% yesterday and I definitely want to finish it because it's just going to be in the back of my head that I got 80% and didn't finish it. <laughs> and, I, and I want that to count as a book on my Goodreads challenge. But right now I'm kind of over it. There's that. Maybe I'll say I finished it in another video. Maybe I'll never finish it or think of it again. Sorry I talked for so damn long, but here are my takeaways from this reading vlog. Read Happy Place by Emily Henry. Credence, if you're gonna read it, beware. Don't know if I recommend it. <laughs> Probably not. I'm 20% into Ninth House by Lee Bardugo and I like it so far. I'm worried though, because it is dark academia. I got Iron Flame and I am going to read it and see if I'm in the mood for it. And if I do get into it right now, I'm gonna have a reading vlog. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. Also, I will be linking my TikTok down below. I post book hauls, talk about books, make stupid bookish videos. So go follow me on there. And I hope you guys will stick around for my next video. See ya!